I, I made so many mistakes recording this video. <laughs> I realized that after I put all of this video together, that there's a couple of things that I actually made mistakes on when I was making it. So I want to start off the video by just addressing those real quick and getting that out of the way. The first one is that you'll notice that the audio quality in this part of the video is going to be much better than the rest of the video. I was actually using a little clip on mic um, that I bought so that I didn't have this big microphone here in front of me um, and the audio quality was terrible. So I've ended up buying a little shotgun microphone, um, which should hopefully give much better audio quality for any videos I do like this. Second of all, what I failed to mention in any of the rest of this video is the use of the machine gun by the driver and the gunner. And I want to quickly talk about that at the start of the video. The driver's machine gun has a tiny little window on the screen with a little dot in it. Now that dot is where your machine gun will fire. So when you're in the driving position, check for that little box, look where the dot is, and that's how you aim. You aim using the mouse. Likewise, when you're in the gunning position, you also have a machine gun that you can fire and you can fire that using the right mouse button. Um, it'll go just off to the side of where the main center of your reticle is, whether you're on the Americans where it's like the crosshair or the triangle if you're in the German tanks. Um, but there are a couple of things that I, I forgot or wanted to mention at the start of the video. My third point, which really isn't to do with the video, but more about my progression as a content creator, I've been exploring the option of streaming live here on YouTube. So I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments at the end of the video, whether or not you would be interested in watching live streaming of Hell Let Loose and any other game that I play, things like World of Tanks, World of Warships, um, WWE 2K, Call of Duty, Lord of the Rings Online, which is an MMORPG. Let me know in the comments down below if there are types of live streams that you'd like to watch as well. Let's just jump straight into the video. Hope you enjoy. Let's talk about tanking. Today, guys, we are carrying on from my latest video about tank support and infantry. We're going to be covering everything from driving, gunning, everything in between. If you haven't checked that video out yet, I'm going to post a link down below in the comments. Go check it out. What's up, guys? It's Spinex here with another Hell Let Loose guide for you today. And of course, if you have any questions about the video or any tips you'd like to share as well on our topic of tanking, I'm live on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Link is in the description below. And of course, if you want to come and join an active, thriving and welcoming community, join us in the 82nd Airborne Division. Our Discord link is also in the description below. Let's start off with the why. What is the purpose of tanking in Hell Let Loose? Well, it's probably because the enemy's going to have them as well. Seriously, though, tanks are a must have in Hell Let Loose. Not only because they're good at killing enemy tanks, but you can smash infantry about, you can flank the enemy, you can take down their structures. The list is kind of endless. Bear in mind that at the time of writing, we're in update 8, so things may change in the future with further updates, so keep eyes on the channel. If there is anything important that changes about tanking, I'll put another video out. Unlike infantry, the tanking classes are very limited. Your squad leader is going to take the tank commander role who can communicate with other squad leaders, place markers on the map and ping the enemies. The other role is tank crewman and you're basically the workhorses of the tank. Everyone has different opinions, but I personally like to be in the tank commander role within the tank if I am a tank commander. That gives me a full field of view. I can direct the tank effectively and we'll cover all of those in just a minute. The other two guys in the tank are going to take the gunner and the driver role. Looking at levels within the different tank classes, once you get your crewman to rank 3, you'll unlock that all-important blowtorch. This means that you can repair your tank on the move without having to return back to base or having to rely on the infantry building you a repair station. And once you get your crewman and commander to rank 8, you're going to unlock two special skins. Now, these have no effect on your gameplay, but they look nice and kind of show to everyone else that you're a veteran tanker. There's four types of tanks in Hell Let Loose. You've got recon vehicles, light tanks, 
medium tanks and heavy tanks. Let's take a look at each of them because believe it or not, it makes a huge difference knowing which tank it is that you're looking at. Recon vehicles are small, agile, speedy. They don't have tracks, they have wheels. This makes them more susceptible to getting stuck on the battlefield, so pick your routes wisely. A great feature of the recon vehicle is their ability to take a snapshot of the battlefield, which will highlight enemies in kind of a dumb bubble thing, which shows up on the map to everyone else in the same way that the commander's recon plane does. To do this, you'll need to be in the commander position and hold down your right mouse button. You'll see a big blue bubble appear in front of you. Look around to the place you want to take a picture of and hit your left mouse button. Remember to reload the camera after you've taken it by hitting the R key and note that it does take a few minutes for that picture to be available again. Recon vehicles include the Puma for Germans and the Greyhound for the Americans and they can both be spawned by the commander for 30 fuel. Light tanks can't be spawned in by the commander but will show up on the map automatically when you load into a warfare game or capture the first point in an offensive game. The American Stewart is quite a tough little cookie and can sometimes even eat a shot from the Tiger if it hits you in the turret. Don't rely on surviving all the time though because more often than not it just goes pop. They do pack a small punch too and can quite easily kill either a medium or a heavy tank from the rear. The German's Lux tank though however is more of an infantry support tank. It only has high explosive rounds though and has 8 magazines of 20 rounds that fire in kind of a burst from two different cannons on the tank. They can't kill enemy medium or heavy tanks but they could kill a Stuart but it's going to take you a few magazines to do that. Medium tanks are a mixed bunch. You have the American Sherman 75mm, which again is an auto spawn and does pack a punch but has fiberglass armour and can be one shot basically anywhere by either the Panther or the Tiger. Speaking of the Panther, my favourite tank. This is one that the Commander can spawn for you and it's going to cost 60 fuel to do so. It's got a decent top speed but does turn quite poorly unless it's in the right hands but it can take on either of the 75 or 76 heavy jumbo tanks that the Americans get. When it comes to heavy tanks the Americans get a choice of two the Sherman Jumbo 75mm and the 76mm. 75 Sherman will set you back 85 fuel with the 76 Sherman costing you 100 fuel. The key way to tell these tanks apart is their colour, gun barrel, muzzle brake and decals, so the images on the side of the tank. The 75mm is a more vibrant green and has last in bastone written on the side with a shorter barrel than the 76. The 76 Sherman has the US star on the front plate with the naked lady image on the side of the tank. They both have different strong points. The 75 has 6 smoke rounds, which is great for smoking in front of your infantry, letting them push on. They will, however, struggle to take on a Tiger head on, so load up that smoke, fire it in the Tiger's eyes, and run away like Brave Sir Robin. Brave Sir Robin ran away, no. bravely ran away, away. I didn't! Until you get a better angle on his side or rear. The 76, however, is a great match for the Tiger, but it does have a few weak spots. Which leads us to the Tiger tank. The one you all want to play, right? Because it's so famous. Wrong. The Tiger is actually one of my least favorite tanks in Hell Let Loose. It costs 100 fuel, the same as the 76 Sherman, but it's quite sluggish. It's got a long reload time and it kind of turns like the QE2 if you're in the wrong gear. That being said, it's got the best armor in the game and can kill any enemy vehicle in one shot if you hit it in the right place. Driving tanks is kind of a mixed bag. Some tanks are really responsive, some are a little tricky at a handle. I'm going to cover off two key points for driving to try and keep things as simple as possible. Let's start with the movement keys. W, S, A, D. W will accelerate your tank while S will brake and A and D turn the tank. The thing to note is that all of the tanks have gears, which we'll cover in a moment, but not all tanks have automatic gearboxes. The only tanks with automated gears are the recon vehicles, whose controls are the same as the trucks. W for forward, S for reverse, left and right with A and D. All of the other tanks have gears, which you can control with the shift and control button on the left hand side of your keyboard. When changing gear, keep an eye on the rev counter. Anything above 20 and you can gear up. 
In most tanks, you want to start off by shifting into first, then get your revs about 20 or above, and then hold down shift until the tank clicks into fourth gear. This will launch the tank forwards for you at a much quicker rate than gearing up like you would do in a regular car. Likewise, if you want to stop, holding the left control button to gear down to neutral whilst holding the S key will stop the tank quickly. Turning the tanks is where things get trickier. The general rule with the American tanks is you're going to want to shift down once into third and then back up again immediately into fourth as you start turning, which will push the tank round the corner. I can't cover how to drive every single tank. We would be here for hours. A couple of things to note though, are that the Tiger will turn best in gear two and four, whilst the Panther requires careful throttle control to get the tank turning quicker. Also, when you're stationary, you'll generally turn quicker in reverse when driving. So stick the tank in reverse when you stop in case you need to do a quick turn. Each tank turns differently though. So what I'd suggest, jump into an empty server jump yourself into a tank and just practice on an empty map. It's one of your main jobs though, to turn the tank to get the gunner on target so that he can fire. Which leads us to gunning. Everyone's favorite position, right? That feeling of clicking the mouse button and going, tanks destroyed. Gunning's quite straightforward. A and D will rotate your turret, W and S will elevate you and press the gun. Use the left mouse button to fire and your scroll wheel to zoom in and out. The turret will always rotate faster when you're at minimum zoom. So if you're shooting a moving target, use minimum zoom to line yourself up where the enemy is moving towards, then zoom in to make the shot. You have three types of shells in tanks as well. You've got armor piercing, which is great against armor. You've got high explosive, which is great against infantry. And you've got smoke shells as well, but they're only available in 75 millimeter Sherman. Always start off by loading an armor piercing round into the gun because the worst thing that can happen is that you run into an enemy tank and you've got high explosive or smoke loaded. There are times though that the smoke round can be useful. If you know that there might be an enemy tiger on the field, I will sometimes load in smoke so that the first thing I can do when I see the tiger is smoke him. That gives me a chance to reposition the tank, move to a better area where I might be able to get a better shot on him. If you can, get the driver to drive past the reload station because then you can drive out with a full ammo rack in your tank and you've still got one extra loaded in the chamber. You can only swap shell types when the gun is empty. So if you load the wrong type of shell in, you have to fire that bad boy off and reload in the right type of shell using your one, two, three keys on the keyboard, just like you would if you were changing gun or item as an infantry player. It's best to keep the gun between the 11 and 1 position on the clock face. This means that when your driver turns the tank to get you on target, you only have to make fine adjustments to be able to shoot it. It's actually quicker to turn the tank than it is the turret, so you're always going to want to stay in that range. And that leads us to the final seat in the tank, the commander role. You are the eyes of the tank. No control options for you other than zooming in and out with your scroll wheel and the ping system. Unless, of course, you're in the recon vehicle where you can take your photographs like we mentioned earlier. I like to take the command roll seat if I am the tank commander because that means I can ping things on the map for the other infantry squads around me. The commander is the eyes of the tank. You're generally there to look left, look right, look behind you. The gunner and the driver can generally keep an eye on what's going on ahead of you. The good thing about this role is you're elevated in the tank, so you can see over things like walls and bushes. You might be able to see the enemy tank, but your driver can't because you might be hid behind a hedgerow. You can then peek over and ping the enemies for the gunner to shoot blind at. Make sure you keep asking squad leaders to ping enemy tanks as accurately as possible for you. This will let you know where to keep your eyes on. Make sure that you ask what type of tank it is as well, so that you know what route you want to take and can plan ahead to best attack that enemy vehicle. Replicate the marks squad leaders give you so that your crew can see them on their map too. The key to commanding is KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. I use phrases such as take us bearing 140, which tells the tank driver to turn the tank 
face 140140 on the compass and drive in that direction. Likewise, if the tank gunner can't see the target, I'll tell him to hit my ping directly. That means he knows exactly where I want him to shoot at. Be clear and concise so there's no confusion. Keep things short and sweet. Positioning your tank is vital to understand and vital to keep your tank alive. Some maps play right into this, such as saint mer or Saint-Marie-du-Mont, where there's a number of really good spots to keep your tank concealed while being able to see quite a large area of the map. What I like to do is jump into an empty map sometimes and just explore different places and positions that I can put the tank and just see what I can see. If you're on something like Foy where it's open ground, simply learning where the depressions are in the map is a really good idea so that you can move around and flank without being seen. When you're face to face with an enemy tank, you're going to want to try and angle your tank very slightly to one side or the other, just so that when shells come in, there's a chance that they'll ricochet and just bounce straight off. This mechanic isn't 100% reliable though. Just be aware of your surroundings and don't plonk yourself in the middle of enemy infantry. Try and move up with your own infantry so that you've got support around you and protection from anti-tankers. Where to shoot tanks is probably the most important thing that you can understand. When I first started tanking, I remember hitting my head against a brick wall firing seven or eight shells out of a 75 Sherman and a Tiger only to be told afterwards that it can't penetrate it from the front. A general rule is don't shoot the front of tanks unless you're in a 76 Sherman shooting the front of a Tiger or you're in a Tiger shooting pretty much anything. There are different weak spots on every single tank and we'll try and cover them off quickly. We're not gonna go through recon vehicles and light vehicles because generally speaking, they're all one shot kills from any medium or heavy tank. So the Sherman tanks. You can generally kill these using the Tiger or the Panther in one shot if you hit them up the ass or the side plate above the tracks below their turret. Their turret will usually take two shots to kill them, but the 76 has a great big target on its front lower plate that's a one shot if you get lucky. It's kind of temperamental. The Panther is similar to the Sherman's, but the 75 might need to put two into its side. The Tiger though is a big beast and needs two shots no matter where you shoot it. Again, if you have the 75mm Sherman, just avoid shooting the Tigers from the front. Or alternatively, about seven or eight shots into its tracks will do the trick. However, if you're in the 76mm Sherman, the front window where the driver looks out of and the little machine gun is, that front plate is a two shot kill. Armor penetration can be a little bit inconsistent at times though and tanks on either side are a little bit unbalanced. So take everything that I've said with a pinch of salt, but I have it on good authority that it is something that's being looked at for future updates. So we might need to rewrite this part of the video. Shooting infantry is pretty simple. Aim your gun, fire the gun and watch them go splat. No, seriously though, just load a high explosive shell and hit left, right, center, um, side of buildings, trees, everywhere, and infantry will just die. You can also shoot structures as well. Um, we covered that in the last video of how tanks can best support infantry, so go check that out if you haven't already. Now you are a pro tanker. It's time to take to the battlefield and put everything that you've just learned to the test. I know I've thrown a lot at you today, so I've split the video up into different sections down below. So keep coming back and re-watching different parts that you feel that you might need to improve on. I'll leave you with one final tip though. The best way you can improve tanking is to duo tank. That means find a friend or a buddy or a community member, jump into a tank with just two of you, because that means that you're gonna have to get more comfortable at swapping roles, doing different tasks, reacting quicker it's going to improve your reaction times and make you a better tanker overall and that's it a basic guide to tanking as usual guys thank you for watching the video make sure that you like and subscribe if you haven't done already and of course stay safe have fun and i'll see you in the next video